A lion and a mouse. Once upon a time, there lived a lion and a mouse. One day, the lion was sleeping. The mouse started playing on it. The lion woke up. He caught up the mouse and was going to kill. The mouse requested for forgiveness. The lion let him go. After some days, the lion caught in a net. The mouse cut the net with his teeth. The lion was free, and he thanked the mouse. The end. The wolf and the lamb. One day, a lamb was eating sweet grass away from her flock of sheep. She didn't notice a wolf walking nearer to her. When she saw the wolf, she started pleading, Please don't eat me. My stomach is full of grass. You can wait a while to make my meat taste much better. The grass in my stomach will be digested quickly if you let me dance. The wolf agreed. While the lamb was dancing, she had a new idea. She said, I can dance faster if you take my bell and ring it so hard. The wolf took the bell and started to ring so hard. The shepherd heard the sound and ran quickly to save the lamb's life. The End Goldilocks and the three bears once upon a time there was a little girl named goldilocks she went for a walk in the forest pretty soon she came upon a house she knocked and when no one answered she walked right in at the table in the kitchen there were three bowls of porridge. Goldilocks was hungry. She tasted the porridge from the first bowl. This porridge is too hot, she exclaimed. So she tasted the porridge from the second bowl. This porridge is too cold, she said. So she tasted the last bowl of porridge. Ah, this porridge is just right, she said happily, and she ate it all up. After she'd eaten the three bears' breakfasts, she decided she was feeling a little tired. So, she walked into the living room where she saw three chairs. Goldilocks sat in the first chair to rest. This chair is too big, she exclaimed. So she sat in the second chair. This chair is too big too, she whined. So she tried the last and smallest chair. Ah, this chair is just right, she sighed. But just as she settled down into the chair to rest, it broke into pieces. Goldilocks was very tired by this time. She went upstairs to the bedroom. She lay down in the first bed, but it was too hard. Then she lay in the second bed, but it was too soft. Then she lay down in the third bed and it was just right. Goldilocks fell asleep. As she was sleeping, the three bears came home. Someone's been eating my porridge, growled the papa bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, said the mama bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, and they ate it all, cried 
the baby bear. Someone's been seating in my chair, growled the papa bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair, said the mama bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair, and they've broken it to pieces, cried the baby bear. They decided to look around some more, and when they got upstairs to the bedroom, Papa Bear growled, Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed too, said Mama Bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, and she's still there, exclaimed the baby bear. Just then, Goldilocks woke up. She saw the three bears. She screamed, help, and she jumped up and ran out of the room. Goldilocks ran down the stairs, opened the door, and ran away into the forest. She never returned to the home of the three bears. The End The Elves and the Shoemaker A shoemaker by no fault of his own had become so poor that at last he had nothing left but leather for one pair of shoes. So in the evening, he cut out the shoes which he wished to begin to make the next morning and as he had a good conscience he lay down quietly in his bed commended himself to god and fell asleep in the morning after he had said his prayers and was just going to sit down to work the two shoes stood quite finished on his table. He was outstanding, and he knew not what to say to it. He took the shoes in his hands to observe them, and they were so neatly made that there was not one bad stitch in them, just as if they were intended as a masterpiece. Soon after, a buyer came in and as the shoes pleased him so well, he paid more for them than was customary. And with the money, the shoemaker was able to purchase leather for two pairs of shoes. He cut them out at night and next morning was about to set to work with fresh courage but he had no need to do so, for when he got up, they were already made, and buyers also were not wanting, who gave him money enough to buy leather for four pairs of shoes. The following morning too, he found the four pairs made, and so it went on constantly. What he cut out in the evening was finished by in the morning, so that he soon had his honest independence again, and at last became a wealthy man. Now it befell that one evening, not long before Christmas, when the man had been cutting out, he said to his wife, before going to bed, what think you if we were to stay up tonight to see who it is that lends us this helping hand? The woman liked the idea and lighted a candle, and then they hid themselves in a corner of the room, behind some clothes which were hanging up there, and watched. When it was midnight, two pretty little naked men came sat down by the shoemaker's table, took all the work which was cut out before them, and began to stitch, and 
sew and hammer so skillfully and so quickly with their little fingers that the shoemaker could not turn away his eyes for astonishment. They did not stop until all was done and stood finished on the table and they ran quickly away. Next morning, the woman said, The little men have made us rich, and we really must show that we are grateful for it. They run about so, and have nothing on, and must be cold. I'll tell thee what I'll do. I will make them little skirts and coats, and vests and trousers, and knit both of them a pair of stockings, and do thou too make them little pairs of shoes. The man said, I shall be very glad to do it. And one night, when everything was ready, they laid their presents all together on the table instead of the cut-out work, and then concealed themselves to see how the little men would behave. At midnight, they came bounding in and wanted to get to work at once, but as they did not find any leather cut out, but only the pretty little articles of clothing, they were at first astonished, and then they showed intense delight. They dressed themselves with the greatest rapidity, putting the pretty clothes on and singing. Now we are boys so fine to see, why should we longer cobblers be? Then they danced and skipped and leaped over chairs and benches. At last they danced out of doors. From that time forth they came no more. But as long as the shoemaker lived, all went well with him, and all his undertakings prospered. The Fox and the Monkey At a great meeting of the animals who had gathered to elect a new ruler, the monkey was asked to dance. This he did so well, with a thousand funny capers and grimaces, that the animals were carried entirely off their feet with enthusiasm and then and there elected him their king. The fox did not vote for the monkey and was much disgusted with the animals for electing so unworthy ruler. One day he found a trap with a bit of meat in it. Hurrying to King Monkey he told him he had found a rich treasure, which he had not touched because it belonged by right to his majesty, the monkey. The greedy monkey followed the fox to the trap. As soon as he saw the meat, he grasped eagerly for it, only to find himself held fast in the trap. The fox stood off and laughed. You pretend to be our king, he said, and cannot even take care of yourself. Shortly after that, another election among the animals was held. The End The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there was an old mother pig who had three little pigs and not enough food to feed them. So when they were old enough, she sent them out into the world to seek their fortunes. The first little pig was very lazy. He didn't want to work at all, but he built his house out of straw. The second little pig worked a little bit harder, but he was somewhat lazy too. 
and he built his house out of sticks. Then they sang and danced and played together the rest of the day. The third little pig worked hard all day and built his house with bricks. It was a sturdy house complete with a fine fireplace and chimney. It looked like it could withstand the strongest winds. The next day, a wolf happened to pass by the lane where the little pigs lived and he saw the straw house and he smelled the pig inside. He thought the pig would make a mighty fine meal and his mouth began to water. So he knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me in, let me in. But the little pig saw the wolf's big paws through the keyhole. So he answered back, No, 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 not by the hairs on my chinny. Then the wolf showed his teeth and said, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I blow your house down. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. The wolf opened his jaws very wide and bit down as hard as he could. But the first little pig escaped and ran away to hide with the second little pig. The wolf continued down the lane and he passed by the second house made of sticks and he saw the house and he smelled the pigs inside and his mouth began to water as he thought about the fine dinner they would make. So he knocked on the door and said, Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. But the little pigs saw the wolf's pointy ears through the keyhole, so they answered back, No, 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 not by the hairs on our chinny. So the wolf showed his teeth and said, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. The wolf was greedy and he tried to catch both pigs at once, but he was too greedy and got neither. His big jaws clamped down on nothing but air, and the two little pigs scrambled away as fast as their little hoops would carry them. The wolf chased them down the lane he almost caught them, but they made it to the brick house and slammed the door, closed before the wolf could catch them. The three little pigs, they were very frightened. They knew the wolf wanted to eat them, and that was very, very true. The wolf hadn't eaten all day and he had worked up a large appetite chasing the pigs around and now he could smell all three of them inside and he knew that the three little pigs would make a lovely feast. So the wolf knocked on the door and said, Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. But the little pigs saw the wolf's narrow eyes through the keyhole so they answered back no 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 not by the hairs on our chinny so the wolf showed his teeth and said then i'll huff and i'll puff and i'll blow your house down well he huffed and he puffed he puffed and he huffed and he huffed <coughs> huff he puffed, puffed, but he could not blow the house down. At last, 
He was so out of breath that he could not huff and he couldn't puff anymore. So he stopped to rest and thought a bit. But this was too much. The wolf danced about with rage and swore he would come down with the chimney and eat up the little pig for his supper. But while he was climbing on the roof, the little pig made up a blazing fire and put on a big pot full of water to boil. Then, just as the wolf was coming down the chimney, the little piggy pulled off the lid and plop. In fell the wolf into the scalding water. So the little piggy put on the cover again, boiled the wolf up, and the three little pigs ate him for supper. The End Little Red Riding Hood Once upon a time, there was a dear little girl who was loved by everyone, who looked at her, but most of all by her grandmother. And there was nothing that she would not have given to the child. Once she gave her a little cap of red velvet, which suited her so well that she would never wear anything else. So she was always called the Little Red Riding Hood. One day, her mother said to her, Come, Little Red Riding Hood, here is a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Take them to your grandmother. She is ill and weak, and they will do her good. Set out before it gets hot. And when you are going, walk nicely and quietly, and do not run off the path, or you may fall and break the bottle. And then your grandmother will get nothing. And when you go into her room, don't forget to say good morning, and don't peep into every corner before you do it. I will take great care said Little Red Riding Hood to her mother and gave her hand on it. The grandmother lived out in the wood, half a league from the village, and just as Little Red Riding Hood entered the wood, a wolf met her. Little Red Riding Hood did not know what a wicked creature he was and was not at all afraid of him. Good day, Little Red Riding Hood, said he. Thank you kindly, wolf. Whither away so early, Little Red Riding Hood? To my grandmother's. What have you got in your apron? Cake and wine. Yesterday was baking day. So poor, sick grandmother is to have something good to make her stronger. Where does your grandmother live, Little Red Riding Hood? A good quarter of a league farther on in the wood. Her house stands under the three large oak trees. The nut trees are just below. You surely must know it replied Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf thought to himself, what a tender young creature. What a nice plump mouthful she will be better to eat than the old woman. I must act craftily so as to catch both. So he walked for a short time by the side of Little Red Riding Hood. And then he said, See, Little Red Riding Hood, how pretty the flowers are about here. Why do you not look around? I believe, too, that you do not hear how sweetly the birds are singing. You walk gravely along as if you were going to school, while everything else out here in the wood is merry. 
Little Red Riding Hood raised her eyes, and when she saw the sunbeams dancing here and there through the trees, a pretty flowers growing everywhere, she thought, Suppose I take grandmother a fresh nosegay. That would please her too. It is so early in the day that I shall still get there in good time. And so she ran from the path into the wood to look for flowers. And whenever she had picked one, she fancied that she saw a still prettier one farther on and ran after it and so got deeper and deeper into the wood meanwhile the wolf ran straight to the grandmother's house and knocked at the door who is there little red riding hood replied the wolf she is bringing cake and wine open the door lift the latch called out the grandmother i am too weak and cannot get up the wolf lifted the latch the door sprang open and without saying a word he went straight to the grandmother's bed and devoured her then he put on her clothes dressed himself in her cap laid himself in bed and drew the curtains little red riding hood however had been running about picking flowers and when she had gathered so many that she could carry no more she remembered her grandmother and set out on the way to her she was surprised to find the cottage door standing open and when she went into the room she had a strange feeling that she said to herself, Oh dear, how uneasy I feel today. And at the other times, I like being with grandmother so much. She called out good morning, but received no answer. So she went to the bed and drew back the curtains. There lay her grandmother with her cap pulled far over her face and looking very strange. Oh, grandmother, she said, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my child, was the reply. But grandmother, what big eyes you have, she said, the better to see you with, my dear. But grandmother, what large hands you have the better to hug you with. Oh, but grandmother, what a terrible big mouth you have, the better to eat you. And scarcely had the wolf said this, than with one bound, he was out of bed and swallowed up Little Red Riding Hood. And when the wolf had appeased his appetite, he lay down again in the bed, fell asleep, and began to snore very loud. The huntsman was just passing the house and thought to himself, how the old woman is snoring. I might just see if she was anything. So he went into the room and when he came to the bed, he saw that the wolf was lying in it. Do I find you here, you old sinner, said he. I have long sought you. Then, just as he was going to fire at him, it occurred to him that the wolf might have devoured the grandmother and that she might still be saved. So he did not fire, but took a pair of scissors and began to cut open the stomach of the sleeping wolf. When he had made two snips, he saw the little red riding hood shining and then he made two snips more and the little girl sprang out crying ah uh, how frightened i have been 
how dark it was inside the wolf. And after that, the aged grandmother came out alive also, but scarcely able to breathe. Little Red Riding Hood, however, quickly fetched great stones with which they filled the wolf's belly. And when he awoke, he wanted to run away, but the stones were so heavy that he collapsed at once and fell dead. Then all three were delighted. The huntsman drew off the wolf's skin and went home with it. The grandmother ate the cake and drank the wine which Little Red Riding Hood had brought and revived but Little Red Riding Hood thought to herself, as long as I live, I will never by myself leave the path to run into the wood when my mother has forbidden me to do so. It is also related that once when Little Red Riding Hood was again taking cakes to the old grandmother, another wolf spoke to her and tried to entice her from the path. Little Red Riding Hood, however, was on her guard and went straight forward on her way and told her grandmother that she had met the wolf and that he had said good morning to her but with such a wicked look in his eyes that if they had not been on the public road she was certain he would have eaten her up well said the grandmother we will shut the door that he may not come in soon afterwards the wolf knocked and cried open the door grandmother i am little red riding hood and am bringing cakes but they did not speak or open the door so the gray beard stole twice or thrice round the house and at last jumped on the roof intending to wait until little red riding hood went home in the evening and then to steal after her and devoured her in the darkness but the grandmother saw what was in his thoughts in front of the house was a great stone trough so she said to the child take the pale little red riding hood I made some sausages yesterday, so carry the water in which I boiled them to the trough. Little Red Riding Hood carried until the great trough was quite full. Then the smell of the sausages reached the wolf and he sniffed and peeped down and at last stretched out his neck so far that he could no longer keep his footing and began to slip and slipped down from the roof straight into the great trough and was drowned but the little red riding hood went joyously home and no one ever did anything to harm her again the end rapunzel there were once a man and a woman who had long in vain wished for a child. At length, the woman hoped that God was about to grant her desire. These people had a little window at the back of their house from which a splendid garden could be seen, which was full of the most beautiful flowers and herbs. It was, however, surrounded by a high wall and no one dared to go into it because it belonged to an enchantress who had great power and was dreaded by all the world one day a woman was standing by his window and looking down into the garden when she saw a bed which was planted with the most beautiful rampion and it looked so fresh and green that she longed for it and had the greatest desire to eat some 
This desire increased every day, and as she knew that she could not get any of it, she quite pined away and looked pale and miserable. Then her husband was alarmed and asked, What ails thee, dear wife? Uh, she replied, If I can't get some of the rampion which is in the garden behind our house to eat, I shall die. The man who loved her thought sooner than let thy wife die, bring her some of the rampion thyself. Let it cost thee that it will. In the twilight of the evening, he clambered down over the wall into the garden of the enchantress, hastily clutched a handful of rampion and took it to his wife. She at once made herself a salad of it and ate it with much relish. She, however, liked it so much, so very much, that the next day she longed for it three times as much as before. If he was to have any rest, her husband must once more descend into the garden. In the gloom of evening, therefore, he let himself down again. But when he had clambered down the hall, he was terribly afraid, for he saw the enchantress standing before him. How can thou dare? said she with angry look to descend into my garden and steal my rampion like a thief thou shalt suffer for it ah uh, answered he let mercy take the place of justice i only made up my mind to do it out of necessity my wife saw your rampion from the window and felt such a longing for it that she would have died if she had not got some to eat. Then the enchantress allowed her anger to be softened and said to him, If the case be as thou say, I will allow thee to take away with thee as much rampion as thou wilt. Only I make one condition thou must give me the child which thy wife will bring into the world it shall be well treated and i will care for it like a mother the man in his terror consented to everything and when the woman was brought to bed the enchantress appeared at once gave the child the name rapunzel and took it away with her Rapunzel grew into the most beautiful child beneath the sun. When she was twelve years old, the enchantress shut her into a tower, which lay in a forest and had neither stairs nor door. But quite at the top was a little window. When the enchantress wanted to go in, she placed herself beneath it and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Rapunzel had magnificent long hair, fine as spun gold. When she heard the voice of the enchantress, she unfastened her braided tresses, wound them around one of the hooks of the window above, and then the hair fell twenty ells down, and the enchantress climbed up by it. After a year or two, it came to pass that the king's son rode through the forest and went by the tower. Then he heard a song which was so charming that he stood still and listened. This was Rapunzel, who in her solitude passed her time in letting her sweet voice resound. The king's son wanted to climb up to her and looked for the door of the tower, but none was to be found. He rode home, 
But the singing had so deeply touched his heart that every day he went out into the forest and listened to it. Once, when he was thus standing behind a tree, he saw that an enchantress came there, and he heard how she cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Then Rapunzel let down the braids of her hair, and the enchantress climbed up to her. If that is the ladder by which one mounts, I will for once try my fortune, said he. And the next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Immediately, the hair fell down and the king's son climbed up. At first, Rapunzel was terribly frightened when a man such as her eyes had never yet beheld came to her. But the king's son began to talk to her quite like a friend and told her that his heart had been so stirred that it had to let him have no rest and he had seen forced to see her. Then Rapunzel lost her fear and when he asked if she would take him for her husband and she saw that he was young and handsome, she thought, he will love me more than old dame Gothel does. And she said yes and laid her hand in his. She said, I will willingly go away with thee, but I do not know how to get down. Bring with thee a skin of silk every time that thou come, and I will weave a ladder with it. And when that is ready, I will descend, and thou wilt take me on thy horse. They agreed that until that time, he should come to her every day, for the old woman came by day. The enchantress remarked nothing of this, until once Rapunzel said to her, Tell me, Dame Gothel, how it happens that you are so much heavier for me to draw. He is with me in a moment. Ah, the wicked child, cried the enchantress. What do I hear thee say? I thought I had separated thee from all the world, and yet thou hast deceived me. In her anger, she clutched Rapunzel's beautiful tresses, wrapped them twice round her left hand, seized a pair of scissors with the right and snip and snap, and they were cut up, and the lovely braids lay down on the ground. And she was so pitiless that she took poor Rapunzel into a desert where she had to live in great grief and misery. On that same day, however, that she cast out Rapunzel, the enchantress in the evening fastened the braids of hair which she had cut off to the hook of the window. And when the king's son came and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. She let the hair down. The king's son ascended but he did not find his dearest Rapunzel above. With the enchantress who gazed at him with wicked and venomous looks, Aha! she cried, mockingly. Thou would fetch thy dearest, but the beautiful bird sits no longer singing in the nest. The cat has got it and will scratch out thy eyes as well. Rapunzel is lost to thee, thou will never see her more. The king's son was beside himself with pain, and in his despair, he leaped down from the tower. 
he escaped with his life, but the thorns into which he fell pierced his eyes. Then he wandered quite blind about the forest, ate nothing but roots and berries, and did nothing but lament and weep over the loss of his dearest wife. Thus, he roamed about in misery for some years, and at length came to the desert where Rapunzel, with the twins to which she had given birth, a boy and a girl, lived in wretchedness. He heard a voice, and it seemed so familiar to him that he went towards it. And when he approached, Rapunzel knew him and fell on his neck and wept. Two of her tears wetted his eyes, and they grew clear again, and he could see with them as before. He led her to his kingdom, where he was joyfully received, and they lived for a long time afterwards, happy and contented. The End Jack and the Beanstalk once upon a time, there lived a poor widow and her son Jack. One day, Jack's mother told him to sell their only cow. Jack went to the market, and on the way, he met a man who wanted to buy his cow. Jack asked, What will you give me in return for my cow? The man answered, I will give you five magic beans. Jack took the magic beans and gave the man the cow. But when he reached home, Jack's mother was very angry. She said, You fool! He took away your cow and gave you some beans. She threw the beans out of the window. Jack was very sad and went to sleep without dinner. The next day, when Jack woke up in the morning, he looked out the window. He saw that a huge beanstalk had grown from his magic beans. He climbed up the beanstalk and reached a kingdom in the sky. There lived a giant and his wife. Jack went inside the house and found the giant's wife in the kitchen. Jack said, Could you please give me something to eat? I'm so hungry. The kind wife gave him bread and some milk. While he was eating, the giant came home. The giant was very big and looked very fearsome. Jack was terrified and went and hid inside. The giant cried, Fee, fi, fo, bum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. The wife said, There's no boy in here. So the giant ate his food and then went to his room. He took out his sacks of gold coins, counted them, and kept them aside. Then he went to sleep. In the night, Jack crept out of his hiding place, took one sack of gold coins, and climbed down the beanstalk. At home, he gave the coins to his mother. His mother was very happy, and they lived well for some time. Climbed the beanstalk and went to the giant's house again. Once again, Jack asked the giant's wife for food. But while he was eating, the giant returned. Jack leaped up in fright and went and hid under the bed. The giant cried, Fee-fi-fo-fum, 
I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. The wife said, there's no boy in here. The giant ate his food and went to his room. There, he took out a hen. He shouted, lay. And the hen laid a golden egg. When the giant fell asleep, Jack took the hen and climbed down the beanstalk. Jack's mother was very happy with him. After some days, Jack once again climbed the beanstalk and went to the giant's castle. For the third time, Jack met the giant's wife and asked for some food. Once again, the giant's wife gave him bread and milk. But while Jack was eating, the giant came home. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread, cried the giant. Don't be silly, there's no boy in here, said his wife. The giant had a magical harp that could play beautiful songs. While the giant slept, Jack took the harp and was about to leave. Suddenly, the magic harp cried, Help, master, a boy is stealing me. The giant woke up and saw Jack with the harp. Furious, he ran after Jack. But Jack was too fast for him. He ran down the beanstalk and reached home. The giant followed him. Jack quickly ran inside his house and fetched an axe. He began to chop the beanstalk. The giant fell and died. Jack and his mother were now very rich and they lived happily ever after. The End Thumbelina by Hans Christian Andersen A long time ago and far, far away, an old woman was sitting in her rocking chair, thinking how happy she would be if she had a child. Then, she heard a knock at the door and opened it. A lady was standing there and she said, If you let me in, I will grant you a wish. The old woman let the woman in firstly because she felt pity. Secondly, because she knew what she'd wish for, a child. After she washed the lady up and fed her, she saw that she was really beautiful. The lady slept soundly all night long. And then right before she left, she said, Now, about your wish, what do you want? The lady thought about most people's wishes to be richest in the world, most powerful person, the smartest, and the prettiest. But the old woman wished for something the lady could not believe. She said, I would like a child. What did you say? She asked because she was astonished at what the old lady asked for. The old lady repeated what she said. I would like a child. The lady then placed a tiny seed in the old woman's hand and gave her instructions. Plant this seed, water it carefully, watch over it, and give it your love. If you do all those things, then you will have a child. So the old woman did all of those things the lady had told her to. In a week, there was a beautiful yellow flower in place of the seed. The next day, the flower bloomed. Inside the flower was a beautiful little girl who was the size of the woman's thumb. So she called her Thumbelina. 
she made her a little dress out of golden threads. Thumbelina slept in a walnut shell and brought the old woman joy and happiness. But one day, when Thumbelina went down for a nap, a frog hopped through the open window and said, You will be a perfect bride for my son. And she took Thumbelina to a lily pad and hopped off to find her son. Thumbelina cried, and some little guppies heard her and chewed the roots of the lily pad to help her escape. Thumbelina's lily pad floated away. A few hours later, she finally stopped floating. During the summer, she ate berries and drank the dew off the leaves. But then winter came and she needed shelter. A kindly mouse let her stay with it, but it said, You'll have to marry my friend, Mole, because I cannot keep you for another winter. The next day, she went to see Mole. In one of tunnels, she found a sick bird and said, Poor thing, I will bury it. Then she found out that it was still alive, and she cared for it until was ready to fly. It flew off. That fall, she nearly had to marry Mole, but then she heard a familiar tweet, and an idea popped up in the bird's head. You can come down to the warm country, she said. So Thumbelina hopped on the bird's back and flew to the warm country. The people there who were like her renamed her Erin. She married a prince and she lived happily ever after. The end.